It's a, that Toni Morrison quote, you know, water has perfect memory, perfect and profound memory. Mm. This is not utopia, this island, but there are elements of it that are utopian. And one of them is liberated black and brown bodies on the beach. This island doesn't have a perfect history. And there's been taking of land and taking of people here, but there's a, been a reclamation as well. This is a story of black home ownership. For my brother, when he said, we're buying a house, I understood what he actually meant. He didn't mean we were buying a house. He said, we're going to have a place to stay, and we're going to have a place to stay together. And for our family, that's never happened. We've never had a single place where we can all be. We've never um, broken that generational curse of like evictions and dealing with um, housing instability. Like this was it. This was like the moment we were going to have a space for us. I know the generational impact of playing small, not taking up space, um, being fearful of institutions like banks, being fearful of big industries like real estate. Like this is a space for me. This is a space for my brother and my family. And we're going to play in it. Thank you very much. You know, my life is a beautiful resistance because I'm willing to put down the roots that no one in my family as of yet has been able to. That willingness to um, be a part of somewhere, to really say I am here and I deserve to be here, that's what me and my brother, I think, really um, have done is we found a place that's uncommon to root and we've rooted. This is your land. You're building a family compound here. This will be the legacy you leave. You now, sometimes it's really hard to grasp this possibility of a legacy. You know, one of the outcomes of poverty is short-term thinking. And as a kid, um, not having a lot of things, I just didn't have a strong grasp on the idea of building something that will last. This, this thing that can be passed on infinitely almost. I feel the disbelief in my heart like, really, we did it? The reason we, we bought this property, my brother has such an eye for small details, and it was on the market for a while. He saw that it was surrounded by trees and on three sides, the land that's untouched, that hasn't been raised to the ground, that doesn't have a commercial footprint, that will never have a commercial footprint. This is the part of our space that's just ours. We have blueberry bushes, we also have a vegetable garden, we're hopeful we will get goats. So this is the, the vision of transporting the history of truly being self-sufficient, being powerful through one's own land. We want to continue that here. Until this year, I had a really hard time being here. And, in, and it sounds silly, but I had a hard time being here and enjoying myself because there was like this, how dare I, how dare we as a family have this much space to be in and this much beauty to look at. And it was really the first time I, I was here and just present and like feeling joy that you're here and feeling joy to be here was this summer. Like I can't stress enough, for my brother and I to get here, we worked separate and alone. We worked our butts off. We worked so hard separately. And we believed, even though we loved each other, that we were on our own separate paths to scrounge money together. And my brother reaching out his hand and saying, you want to do this with me? That was the magic. We actually bought it together. That we actually did it together. Like, I have a, such a distinct memory of Anton holding me. I have more memory of that, of being held by my brother, than of like anyone in my family. He helped raise me. You know, I never would have thought that this was possible back then, of course not, you know. Growing up, it wasn't in, in our conception of possible that you could really say our home, capital O, capital H, like, and that's just what it is. A lot of our generation that grew up here um, is being pushed out or being priced out. 
there's a part of this that's that's home for us and not just in passing and not just by circumstance or by chance but by like an intentional community building moment so i like that that's what feels good about this so when we talk about boston mm -hmm. and and living living there and also living here yeah. you know that's the third most gentrified city in the nation Woo. we're seeing what's happening here even on the vineyard like you know, we're celebrating that black people are still here, but yeah. black and brown peoples, indigenous peoples, immigrants are getting pushed out, are still facing hurdles. How do you see a way forward for us as a people collectively? So I maintain two hopes about this island. The first hope is that here, community is more important than class. The second thing is, um, I do believe in magic, and I'm not talking about the kind that comes from like wizards and fairy tales. I'm talking about the um, incredible strength of shared memories passed on family to family, that regardless of what happens here, the gentrification, buying up of houses, that we as black people will continue to come. That black and brown bodies will always be on the inkwell, regardless. Like we will find a way to continue to keep the roots that are here firmly planted because there's just no other way. These memories from generation to generation to generation of sitting here on this island, I, I, I believe unbelievable um, acts of strength and endurance you know, by us to stay here. They're not only possible, they're probable. And that's magic to me, sticking around and staying um, through through any circumstance, and gentrification is yet another circumstance. We've been through worse. We shouldn't be through it at all, but I have hope. And what's interesting about Vineyard Haven is it truly is a haven for the boats. You know, if you come down, you'll see everyone, this is where they, they this is safe harbor. This is where the water doesn't get rough. This is where it's super simple. And I stop here all the time when I'm upset. I'll actually go to this hill and just stop. And to me, this is like one of the most, just, yeah, mercy, stop. Yeah, and this is the water that brought me home. This is the water where the ferry landed and where I'd see my brother and where he and me and my mom, we would all be together for whatever short stolen moment this was home. So I, when I think about this beach and the view of the ferry, it instantly connects me to some gratitude. I can feel my belonging here, but I can also feel how far we've come as a family. <laughs> it's so funny, I've, I've been coming to Inkwell my whole life, so that when I actually went to other beaches, I said something's wrong here. So it was, um, it was the normal. You know, and to see myself reflected on the beach, that was normal. And then to go elsewhere and really start to feel like the only one, that was, I immediately knew that wasn't how it was supposed to be. Because we're gonna have a legacy. No one will ever sell that house, not my children, not their children, and not their children, here to stay. But this idea of a generational curse is that there's a way things go. There's a way things go in our family. There's a way things go in our relationships and the decision making. And the beautiful resistance for me is, in part, has nothing to do with New England. It's the resistance of that pattern. Whether it's evictions, whether it's of separation, of not feeling good enough, of not going for that thing we really want, of not putting down the roots, like, I'm resisting that. If I told people we were gonna do a graffiti project around the city, heads would roll. What do you mean? But for me, graffiti, mural, street art, it's all semantics.